What's up guys, Art MMA Analysis here, gonna be talking about uh, one of the biggest controversies in MMA, like right now, but that is just kind of going under the ra radar a little bit, and that is the PFL Challenger Series 7 Pro Debuts, and what has actually happened here, as ESPN has reported, Professional Fighters League Challenger Series event flagged for suspicious betting activity after the league said fights were pre-taped. So these fights took place a week before the event, and um, it was still advertised as live, and you could still bet on the fights. But um, the winners were potentially already known to other people, and that is why the lines completely flipped. Like, you look at um, Rakim Talley, for example, you know, like, this guy probably opened around minus 275, and then on the 2nd of April, when potentially it was known that he won, um, the, the lines went absolutely insane. It's, absolute, it's the same as Dairy Alderman, opened around minus 200, and then the lines have just gone crazy downhill. Um, in favor to him and um, I'm gonna be honest before we get into it uh, My uh, main source for this or the the man that I found the information from really was this video PFL Challenger Series 7 under investigation by Gaming Commission by MMA Fight Club I will be linking that in the pinned comment and the reason why I thought like you know Like why I should talk about this is because it doesn't really seem like anyone else is really talking about it either so, um, yeah, I thought that maybe it would be worth making just a little video about it, talking about it, and uh, just reading an article uh, from Bloody Elbow. Once again, I'm going to have to give some uh, uh, some credit to uh, Mookie Alexander from Bloody Elbow. Tape delayed PFL Challenger Series card flagged for suspicious betting activity when live fights aren't actually live. So, um, what has happened is on... On Saturday, the U.S. Integrity, a Las Vegas-based company that monitors betting markets, sent an alert to Sportsbook saying that it confirmed with the PFL that the fights were pre-taped on March the 25th. As such, it's very possible that um, some potential suspicious wagering activity is indicative of nefarious behavior and um, and recommended that the sports books that offered wagering on the event notify the state regulators. And as a result of this event being advertised as live, as a result of this event uh, being taken place last week, but um, being advertised as live and still letting you um, uh, bet, uh, Arizona's Department of Gaming has actually removed PFL itself from its wagering catalog, while other states such as Nevada, New Hampshire, and Colorado are either investigating the matter or are at least aware of the situation. PFL hasn't explained why the event was shown on a delay, and um, this is just another comment here, any sports books that took bets on a pre-recorded program did so without the consent or knowledge of the PFL, adding that the PFL will further evaluate the matter, and that uh, PFL uh, included in the U.S. Integrity's alert, the league entered kind of confidenti confidentiality agreements with everyone involved. So what happened was, the fights were pre-taped, the fights took place a week before, the winners and the losers had to sign a confidentiality agreement to uh, not let anyone else know who had won the fight or who had lost the fight. And um, clearly what it seems to have happened is potentially some of that information, who won, who lost, may have leaked. And uh, as a result of this, we're getting absolutely insane uh, betting um, changes, you know, like not so much in this fight here, but um, even in the Christian Turner fight, you know, he was a minus 300 favorite, and then he just dropped to about minus 600. And I will be giving some more advan uh, examples as well, Alejandro Pantagre, I guess even a similar situation uh, took place in that one there. And... Um, yeah, so Mac also wrote that the PFL did not include any betting lines, content, or promotion in connection with the program, but the league did post several teasers to the event on Twitter, including one tweet on Friday evening that posted photos of fighters in the octagon and said, checking out tonight's office, and directed people to the link um, live on Fubo TV. The PFL Challenger Series is typically streamed live on Fubo Sports Network. Jennifer Press, Senior Vice President of Communications for Fubo TV, told ESPN, the April 1st event was the lone exception and was pre-taped. We inadvertently used the same promo copy for the April 1 show as we did for previous shows, which was a mistake. We regret the error. And then um, this is just a little comment here. So BetMGM listed heavyweight Rakeem Talley as a minus 295 favorite. So that's probably the opening odds there. But he soared all the way up to minus 2,500 ahead of his eventual win over Santino Zarita, which is insane. That's an insane a change in line and uh, this is just talking about a better he said that he won his bet and then uh, the next day all of the money had been like given back or like he didn't the one the money said he won uh, the bets that he placed they all won the money was in my account and then he logs in on Sunday to place some more bets on UFC and the money was gone 
a draft king sportsbook which has a multi-year gambling and fantasy partnership with pfl offered betting odds on pfl challenger sevens in several states and told espn that they operated under the pretense that it was a live show at the time we believed the event in question was live after noticing unusual activity on a number of fights draft kings removed the markets we are working with regulatory bodies to determine the appropriate course of action this certainly isn't the type of attentional issue pfl wants on its hands as the promotion prepares for its 2022 regular season on april 20th so what it kind of seems like is it means you may not be able to bet on pfl in some states in the usa maybe even some international countries as well you may not be able to bet because they may not trust pfl to uh, not be uh, putting these these events live which is a, a big shame for pfl but it is a big mistake and it's a big controversy that they've done here so um a lot of people probably won and a lot of people probably lost money because of this um situation so those people that knew who had won the fight obviously like if i found out someone definitely won a fight from the legitimate source um you know you'd you put you put a decent amount of money on them to get the money back because you think that you're gonna win uh, but obviously what has actually happened is um people have done that and that is why the lines are so so open so obviously some of this information that it wasn't actually live has leaked and it's not the only um time like pfl has had some sort of controversy like the glaston t val rory mcdonald fight i mean the judges on that one were smoking something special uh, that night for sure and um yeah this is another episode uh sorry uh, article from mma mania and i think actually this one has an interview um with rory mcdonald yeah so yeah there we go rory mcdonald looking for an investigation um any sports books that took bets on the pre-recorded coban no, that's different that's completely different sorry uh, this is the same um article sort of thing but yeah that's kind of what i wanted to talk about here like shout out to mma fight club i didn't know anything about this until he made the video and it kind of seems like a lot of um i mean like it's not like they've gone quiet like espn has literally put a story out on um on their website which and and um i mean like it's a pretty major platform so it's not like no one's talking about it it's just that it seems like it hasn't really got much traction so i thought that i would make a little video about it just let you guys know like kind of what's going on not really um taking too much of a side either way but it's just just a little general news video so hopefully you guys enjoyed that one and i'll leave you guys uh in the next episode